Hello everyone, I am Micah History, and I think most of you guys know that, but because I will be posting this on Demographia, I am Micah, I'm the guy behind Demographia, I know I haven't really made any content for a long time, but there's a reason for that, I have been busy on my other channels, and also I am working on making, um, remaking all my old videos, and making new content here. So, anyways, now with all that out of the way, the purpose of this video is today we will be looking at my ancestry results, where I am from, and this is going to be really cool. For those of you who are watching from Demographia and already subscribers, this is going to be cool because this is exactly what my channel is about. And for those of you who are not Demographia subscribers, but who watch my main channel, Micah History, this is going to be good because this pretty much is kind of like my Elizabeth II series, but it's about myself this time. So, anyways, without further ado, let's get right to it. I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit here. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, the other thing, I've not opened this email yet. Uh, well, I, I've like clicked on the email, but I haven't clicked the link, so this is all live. Um, so any reaction you see here is going to be live, which hopefully is good. Also, hello, Cab Calloway. I don't think I've seen you before, but welcome. Oh, okay, it's Joshua. Welcome, Joshua. All right, so actually, you know what? First thing, let's do some predictions in the chat. I want to hear your guys' predictions, and then I'll open... And we will find out the long-awaited mystery. So just put uh, put your info in the chat and uh, let, let me know your predictions. All right, so we have one prediction, mix of Italian, Ethiopian, and English. Nice. 100% based. That's correct. I am 100% based. Well, we're talking about, I guess, just uh, estimates of ethnicity. All right, Italian. That's 17%. All right, so we got some Italian out there. Um, the rest of y'all can uh, put in your predictions. All right, African, European, American. Oh, interesting. This is like, oh, I like this. 3% Arab, 16% Ethiopian, 5% Indian, 10% Canadian, 100% Genuine. I like this. I like this answer. I'm going to, can you, can you pin these stuff? I'm pinning this message, yes. All right. There we go. I, I like this message here. 100% Japanese. Yeah, I know you're trolling. Perhaps a little Hispanic? Hey, maybe I am. We'll find out. Alright, so if anyone wants to put in any last minute predictions, and then I'll open the email. 100% Greta Thunberg? I hope not. I really hope not. I mean, given that one of my most popular videos is me roasting her, I really hope I'm not Greta Thunberg. 100% Christian based. I like this answer too. Um, yep. Alrighty. So now that we've done the predictions, let's go to the infamous email. Alrighty, here it is. Micah, the ancestry DNA results you've been waiting for are here. All right, so I've, as I said, I've never clicked this. This is all going to be live. Whoa. All right, let's do this. Okay, my results have arrived. Ethnicity breakdown, DNA story, DNA matches. And this is the... Uh, okay, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so first thing... 38% Eastern Bantu peoples. Now, that makes sense. And the reason this makes sense is because my mom is from Uganda, uh, where most people are Bantu, and that's the eastern part of Africa. All right, so this totally makes sense. Um, and so given that my mom is from Uganda, this would mean 38 times 2. So, next, England and Northwestern Europe. 35%, nice. I mean, this is pretty much kind of what I expected. But I find this this to be much more interesting. 10% Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu. 
I literally had no idea I had like any West or Central African ancestry because, you know, my mom's from Uganda, so I kind of just assumed all of my African DNA would be Eastern Bantu, but apparently not. 10% Germanic Europe, yo, that is epic. 3% Sweden and Denmark. Let's go! 2% Scotland. My last name is Scottish, so I guess, you know, I've lost the 98%, but I still have 2% of Scottish. Micah Idi Aminus. <laughs> yes. So for those of you who didn't know, my last name is Scottish. Well, I guess probably most of you didn't know that. So anyways, I guess the Scottish DNA has survived. 1% Nilotic. Now, there are Nilotic people in Uganda, so this, you know, it doesn't surprise me. 1% Khoisan, Aka, and Mbuti. Now, that is interesting, because these people are, like, super rare and small. Whoa, 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 whoa. DNA communities. Eastern Ohio River Valley. I did not know that. Amish. Wow. I mean, imagine I'm related to some Amish people. That's kind of weird. Well, I mean, I guess not really weird, because I'm pretty much... I'm pretty much super religious like them, but, you know, without the whole no technology stuff. Central Switzerland. Interesting. Yo, I have a lot of American. Alright, so, either share my results, I'll do that later. View DNA story. Okay, let's do this. Let's go. Well, I mean, as I predicted, you know, all Africa and Europe, and I'm pretty happy that it's pretty much all Germanic. It's kind of what I wanted. And actually, I'll go through each individual part because I don't, while I can't, don't know a tremendous amount of my history, especially on the African side, I can uh, tell you what I do know from my own history, just from what my parents and family have told me. Yes, yo, AS Mapping! So good to see you in the chat. I've, uh, I've not seen you here for a very long time, so once you hear this message, just send a thumbs up or something that you heard what I said. Yes, indeed. I am a uh, half African. It's like Andrew Tate. Yeah, Andrew Tate. I think Andrew Tate is a bit more white. Or, no, I see a bit more black. But anyway. Yes. Okay. Alright, let's do this. We will start off with uh, Eastern Bantu. Yep, exactly what I thought. This is Uganda. This is where my mom's from. So... Let's see. Okay, home to some of our earliest human ancestors or Eastern Bantu people regions was populated in part by people who came from the West as part of the Bantu migrations, one of the greatest movements of people in history. Eastern Equatorial Africa is now home to scores of ethnic groups and languages. It's also known for spectacular landscapes including Africa's largest lake, its tallest peak, and world famous wildlife reserves. All right. Yep. I mean, this is what I expected. This is where my mom's from, so makes sense. I am a little more interested in uh, these other parts, though, because this is the part I did know about. Just quickly check the comments again. Not to get confused with subnatural Buganda. Yeah, it's true. But my mom is from the Buganda people, so yeah, they're the people who are the not the majority, but the largest group in Uganda, and you know named after it. Alright, so next, let's look at this. Nilotic people. So it's 1%. Nilotic peoples are linked by common language and homelands along the Nile Valley in Sudan in the distant past. Over time, groups moved southward into East Africa and as far south as Tanzania, including the Luo, Maasai, Turkana, Dinka, Nuer, and Kisigis. Oh, and by the way, not to spoil too much, but I am working right now on uh, a project regarding African ethnic groups, so stay tuned for that. Some became farmers and fishers over time, others have remained nomadic pastoralists, keeping herds of cattle and goats. At the end of colonialism, they entered government and business, and have gained fame as the world's greatest distance runners. You see, this makes sense. You can see, guys, I, uh, I was doing uh, cross-country running for four years, so it makes sense that I have this DNA in me. Now that said, it is 1%, so really it's not that much, but hey, 1% is better than nothing. And, you know, given the fact that South Sudan's right next to Uganda, it's pretty normal that some of their DNA would have come over here, right? Alrighty, next. Let's, uh, let's look at this. 
Cameroon, Congo. So you see, the, the main problem with this one just is that it's such a large area. I mean, I could have ancestors from here, from here, from here. Like, it's not, it's not very specific, but I guess probably not that many Africans take these tests. And also, um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of muddled in terms of history, right? So, this is more just about where these people are located. Extending through the heart of Africa are Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples region winds through tropical rainforest, humid savanna, and semi-arid deserts. Starting about 3,000 years ago, Bantu-speaking people spread from area around the border of modern-day Cameroon and Nigeria through much of sub-Saharan Africa in one of the greatest migrations in human history. Today, the region is home to unrivaled ethnic and linguistic diversity. Okay, welcome uh, you two new people on home Senzo and Renoa Prem. Welcome. Um, okay. So, I mean, apparently it's about 10% of my uh, ethnicity comes from these guys. It's not very specific, but again, makes sense. I mean, if you look at it right, these guys are just next to Uganda. So, Now, I am a little more interested in this, though. Right? So this is a... Uh, this is only 1% again. It says, Populations in our Khoisan, Aka, and Mbuti peoples regions include hunter-gatherer and pastoral groups whose ancestors have lived in Africa for thousands of years. In fact, these guys are probably, like, some of my oldest ones. They make their homes in many different climes, I guess climates, from rainforests to savannas. They are known for their intimate knowledge of the landscapes they live in. The small in number, these peoples are now drawing the attention of scholars and researchers for their genetic diversity, ancient origins, and unique cultural traditions and knowledge that have been passed down for centuries. Okay, well, that's pretty interesting. So I guess I have 1% of this rare people. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is all my African stuff. Um, but now we're going to look at Europe because I do know a little more about that family history just because it's been more well-preserved. Alrighty, let's go to Europe. Um, yeah, okay. So we're going to start off with uh, Sweden. Sweden and Denmark. Now this makes sense. So I think my grandmother's grandmother, I believe, came from Sweden. Uh, or perhaps her great-grandmother, I'm not sure. But this is why I'm not surprised at all that I have the Swedish... Um, actually, my grandma will be very happy to hear about this. Um, so, our Sweden and Denmark region emerged from glacial ice as lands of lakes and islands, mountains and plains. Though these countries are often at war, the people share a common Norse heritage that includes elements of language, religion, and art, though they eventually developed cultures of their own. Situated along the western boundaries of the Baltic Sea, relative geographic isolation did not stop the Swedes and the Danes from influencing culture, trade, and politics. Now, while I might have some Danish, I'm pretty sure this is the Swedish, because my grandma told me about her one of her Swedish ancestors. All right, now we're going to go to Deutschland, which I think a lot of you guys will be interested in. Or Germanic Europe, I guess, includes the Netherlands, too. Just going to check the comments again. All right, so, Germanic landscape of our Germanic... Europe region rises from the Dutch and German lower la lowlands along the North Sea through forested uplands to Austria's Alps in the south. German people were united by language and culture before Germany became a united country in 1871. Known as Das Land der Dichter und Denker und Nazis, the land of poets and thinkers, German, Germany is home to some of the oldest universities in the world, and this region has a long tradition of producing world-class scientists, inventors, theologians, artists, composers, and world wars. All right. Pretty cool. So, again, this is about 10% of my ancestry. Um, so, yeah, I have a decent amount of German in me, actually. I guess some Dutch. I know I have some Dutch ancestry, but I think it's more German. Um, right, now we're going to go Scotland here. So, again, this is, this is, I have a direct line back to Scotland because I still have a Scottish last name. So, with its center in the northern third of the island of Great Britain, but stretching down to Brittany and France, 
The Scotland ethnicity region is known for its geographical beauty, medieval architecture, and folklore. Gaelic and Scots have influenced regional English dialects and are both still spoken in some areas. National symbols, including the lion rampant, clan tartans, and bagpipes, are often recognized internationally alongside symbols of traditional cuisine like whiskey and haggis. This is epic. This is this is pretty epic. I like this. All right, and finally, the one I've been looking most forward to: England, and Northwestern Europe. I think pretty much this is all England. I mean, look at this. It's, yeah, so about 35% English. You know, I was expecting obviously like my European ancestry to be majority English, but like this is more English than I expected. So I'm c pretty happy about that uh, because that means my dad is about 70% English because he's the one with uh, European ancestry in my family, so, yeah, so, uh, that's pretty cool. The history of Britain, the heart of our England and Northwestern Europe region, is often presented as one group of invaders after another, displacing the native population. The Romans, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, and Normans all left their mark on Britain both politically and culturally. However, the story of Britain is far more complex. In fact, modern studies suggest the earliest populations weren't, weren't wiped out, adapted and absorbed the new arrivals. So what I can say, and this is probably the coolest part, I can trace my ancestors in England back a thousand years, at least. And some of them came along with William the Conqueror. Um, yeah, came along with William the Conqueror in, in 1066. So that is, uh, that's pretty cool. Now let's go back to here. So, so this is the overall part. So now just my thoughts on like how surprised I was. I mean, you know, this stuff doesn't really surprise me too much. I guess I was expecting a little more when it came to like the Europeans. Like, you know, I thought I might have a bit more other European. But yeah, pretty much I'm just on European and just pure Germanic apart from the small amount of Scottish I have. Um, as for African... I mean, obviously I expected this to be the most, but, you know, this is 38%, which still means I have 12% of other African DNA. Um, so that was a little surprising. So I was surprised by how much other African I have, especially because I guess, like, you know, my, my mom's side, we don't really have as much historical knowledge on where they came from. Um, so... Anyways, let's let's just uh let's see, right? Oh, this is interesting. This is cool, I didn't even see this. So inherited from parent one, inherited from parents two. So what does this mean? Can you click on this? Oh, okay. So let's see, right? So my so this would this is uh this is me, right? And I guess this is my mom. This is Eastern Bantu. Right? Then, same. My mom. Then, uh, Nilotic. And then Khoisan, right? Alright, so got it correct in terms of, uh, ethnic breakdown. So now we, let's remove this. And we look at my dad. So, Again, my dad pretty much mostly English. And this is me. This is Germanic. This is Sweden, Denmark, Scotland. Oh no, that's my mom's. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's my dad's side. Okay. Now let's go down here. See what this is. Alright, okay, so I think I'm going to go back now, back to the map. This is this is pretty informative. I am happy that this was uh, accurate, because I know some people get inaccurate results, but like this was very, very accurate, I think. You know, calculated 50%, and I'm pretty happy with the results. I mean, also I like the fact that I have a bunch of English DNA on my dad's side, so uh, that's pretty good. Because in case you couldn't tell already, I'm a big Anglophile. Uh, and it's actually interesting because I'm pretty much about as English as I am Ugandan. Like with Ugandan, it's only 3% more. 
than it is English, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so it also shows that my mom actually does have more than just Ugandan DNA. So I'll I'll go tell her about that. That would be cool to for her to find out. They all look like me someone. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. One of my relatives looks like Guy Fieri. The woman on the left looks so goofy. Yeah, she does. Okay. Well, anyways, guys. Now I will hand it over to you in the comments. If you want to ask me some questions before we end the stream, just let me know. And also, after this, I am planning on uh, releasing my survey results tomorrow. And that's going to be cool. So you guys definitely should uh, stay for that. Anyways, let's, let's go back to um, yeah, explaining why I'm not Italian. Um, that sounds kind of weird. But... Um, Pretty much the reason I don't have any Italian DNA is because um, even though I lived there, the only reason I moved to Italy is because my dad worked in Italy. He was just sent there because he, you know, works with the uh, UN. So he just moved there. And so that's the reason why uh, I don't actually have any, any Italian DNA. And I guess like if you saw a picture of my dad, like you'd notice he's, I mean, he's like six foot five. So no, definitely not Italian at all. Um, now, do I think my wife in the future would have the same genes? Unlikely. I mean, there are not that many people who are, like, mixed African and European. Um, but, you know, who knows? I mean, I could, I could marry someone who's, like, full African or full European. So, that would be interesting. So, perhaps I will be doing, like, you know, I'll be doing this video in five years or whenever I get married. Um, next. Mike is still 0.1% Arab and Indian, so don't worry about the pain to count being active. Well, I, I'm not one zero point one. I'm like literally just purely African and uh, European. Um, yeah, now nah, I mean, so he said I look like I have 80% and 20, 80% African, 20% Anglo. I mean, I am like a little darker than my siblings, but no, it's it's half half. And the and the DNA test just proved this that it's literally split exactly fifty percent. Um, I self-identify as Japanese. No, I actually self-identify as a woman. Um, say Wakanda forever. Okay, just said that. Whoa! Showed both German and Namibian. Interesting. Imagine one of my ancestors is a German colonizer. No, but that's that's unlikely. I mean, my German ancestors would have just come to America. And then from the, or for, to Canada, and then, you know, whatever. Okay, since in other countries you need a certain amount to apply for citizenship, would you apply for any of the countries listed? I don't think I would, because I think most countries don't really need an ethnic percentage. Um, I could probably become a British citizen, a Ugandan citizen, American citizen. Relatively easy, I think. All right. Now, which countries? As far as I know, no count, country counts DNA tests as well, but actually Israel does. And I remember I learned that because I went to Israel. Um, yeah. Okay, next. How many languages do you speak? So I speak four languages. English, French, Spanish, Italian. And I'm learning Portuguese, so that's still something I need to improve on. Portuguese. But yeah, I speak four at the moment. Oh, I didn't know Britain does in certain cases, like... That's interesting. Well, I guess if you want to apply for Britain, like, would it have to be just English, or could you... I mean, I guess if you're Scottish or Welsh, you'd probably be fine, too. Although, I wonder what they'd do about the Irish. Okay, Israel does use DNA tests, but you also need documents and other stuff along with it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I don't think they'll just give you a DNA test, and as long as you're Jewish, you're allowed in. Oh, by the way, Dar Darvaza Archive, I'm interested. Do you know how Jewish you need to be to get into Israel? Okay, say something in Italian. Uh, D'accordo. Quindi, per me è la prima volta che sto parlando in italiano quest'anno. E sono contento di vedere che non sono italiano. No, no. È uno scherzo. By the way, all I, all, I, all I said is this is my first time speaking Italian and I'm glad to know that I have no Italian DNA. But that's a joke. I could be a Commonwealth citizen. I mean, given that co Canada is in the Commonwealth, I'm pretty sure I already am a Commonwealth citizen. 
Okay, how tall am I? Do I have my Nordic genes? Yes, my Nordic genes did help. Uh, my mom's like not that tall, but I am six foot two, which I think is like what one eighty eight centimeters ish. So, yeah. Okay, you need at least one Jewish grandparent to be eligible for immediate Israeli citizen, or you can convert to Judaism. You can also do what the Russian immigrants did and lie. So it sounds like such a Russian thing. Oh, you're twenty five percent Italian. Cool, Luis Aldemis. I'm I'm interested. Like, are you Argentine or like where are you from? All right, I'm I'm guessing that's okay. He's Basque. Oh, that's so cool, actually. Yo, I mean, I think I think some of you guys know this, but perhaps not all of you do. The Basques are literally the only pre-Indo-European people to have survived. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so you're Basque, so I guess you're like three quarters Basque and a quarter Italian. Okay, wait, never mind. 56% Basque, 25% Italian, the rest Spanish. That's pretty cool. So I, do you live in Spain? I assume you do based on the name, but just let me know where you live. Okay, so in the Basque country, we still want a freedom. Okay, so I assume he lives in in uh, Spain then. Okay, Sir Welsh says, I have, well, it makes sense. Your name is Sir Welsh. I have Welsh blood alongside other genes from the Old Isles. Common for people with my last name. Yeah, makes sense. Your last name is literally Welsh. Okay, you live in Idaho. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry you live in Idaho. Not recognizing Spain. Okay, let's see. So you're half Jewish, 49% Euromud, 1% Northeast Indian. Oh, wait, have you done, you've done this test, haven't you? Darvaza? Have you, you've done these, these ancestry tests, right? Oh, you're from Bilbao. Okay. I've been to Spain, actually, Luis, but I've not ever been to Bilbao. I've only been to Barcelona and just the general area there. Julius Caesar, you live in Chosen Prefecture. No, you don't. You you literally just live in, uh, in Nebraska or something. Okay, so you haven't done DNA tests. You know, and by the way, not that I, I, I'm, like, telling you to do this, but I would say if you want to do a DNA test, you should. Because I know, at least when it comes to Jewish people, a lot of them do have some mixture just because Jews have been in Europe so long. So I'd be interested in knowing, like, you know, your percentage of Jewish, but, yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, I think it was a pretty cool. Unless you guys have any last questions, I think I'm going to end it here. But remember, guys, I am going to be uploading this on Demographia. Um... And, I, of course, I'll send the link and I'll tell people on the channel to, like, check it out. But, um, yeah, on that channel, Demographic, I'm really hoping this year I can revive that channel. Like, actually make some videos. Okay, your family has done DNA tests. Julius, what are your results? I'm interested. Okay, largely German, British, okay. Oh, interesting. I didn't know you could join the Anglo. Oh my goodness, I'm being called again. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remind. Yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna remind later. I, I'm not gonna interrupt this for another time. Okay, you have some Swedish, you have some Polish. All right. Just, uh, just let me know, guys. If you have any other questions, you can either write yes or no, just so I know, and then we can end the stream pretty soon. Well, I think I'm going to end the, the stream now because uh, my grandma's calling. Is six too tall? It, it is. I mean, I think even in Canada, I'm probably taller than like 90 or 95% of guys. But then, you know, I feel like people actually overestimate the amount of people who are over six foot. Should you invite someone else to watch the channel one day? Yeah, 100%. All right, guys. Well, I have to go help. So I will end the stream here. Thanks all for coming. This was very interesting. I enjoyed doing this. And hopefully I'll be streaming tomorrow, this time my uh, survey results. So.